Welcome to the Tucker and Crowley Report. We're part of News Now and the Belmont Journal, and Franklin Tucker, editor of the, Bel of the Belmontonian, is with us. Franklin, we have a number of things to talk about this week. First up, let's talk about the official launch of the budget and override process. That's right. It's official. Uh, like you said, uh, we're, we're starting off um, probably a six-month program of uh, meetings and, as they say, public forums uh, about the budget. Uh, it, it happened uh, this, uh, uh, before the uh, select board on Thursday. Um, it was, and it was uh, pretty much um, uh, a, a, a chance for the select board to hear from the public. Um, uh, Jeff Lubin, the, the chair of the Warren Committee, gave pretty much a primer on how the budget is made and what the budget is in, in Belmont. And, and what difficulties that we're facing looking at fiscal 25 and beyond. That's right. He, he, he set it up perfectly. Um, uh, it, it was just um, uh, uh, that we are not bringing enough <laughs> revenue <laughs> as a town. And uh, we're, we're, we're stuck a little bit uh, due to, um, as, as Elizabeth Dion, uh, select board member said, you know, we have a 95-5 uh, split, which is 95% of our revenue comes from um, uh, well, from our from our property tax revenue right. is, is um, uh, coming from residential homes. They, um, uh, I think it's sixty percent to forty percent uh, single family homes and uh, uh, you know two family homes. Right, uh, that's the majority, and we just don't have the commercial base that we can go out and uh, find. Um, you know that can help uh, alleviate uh, the 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 steady and growing deficit that we have in town. Although she does point out that's a long-term project to try to build that, but that won't help us this year. So Franklin, no, <laughs> no what, it won't. What is the plan for this year? The plan, well, it is uh, to support an override. You know, there's no two ways about it. They've looked at any way and every way they could they can uh, save money or increase revenue, and the only way they can really do it at the amount that that would be required to keep services running at a, at, at a constant level is through an override. And uh, it's, it really is a, a two part process. One is that they're going to, uh, the select board has until late February to decide how big the override will be. And I, they want to keep it as low as possible. Uh, one of the, one of the, one of the things that is preventing them from doing it sooner is because we don't have certified uh, free cash. Uh, from the state, uh, which is basically the state signing off on how much free cash we have in town. Uh, that will um, really de uh, determine how much uh, is going to be the override about uh, uh, the override amount. The second thing is, how do you pitch it? How do you pitch uh, supporting an override to, to town residents? Because uh, it's 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 uh, we uh, the town um, uh, voters have uh, rejected more overrides than they have passed. Uh, well, the most recent one in 2021, and that, that, was, per, that was defeated per, by, a, by a substantial number. So unless there are some big surprises coming with free cash or potential state aid, um, we, we are looking at um, potential cuts um, just of, of a magnitude that we have not seen here in Belmont. Um, dozens of town and school employees. If, if, if not more. Yeah, I mean, uh, it is uh, as uh, you know. There's one of three ways you can look at the uh, a budget for next year. I mean, one is uh, the uh, non-override budget, and that would be devastating. Uh, the second one would be uh, passing an override, um, and the third is um, you know almost like a combination of two. You know, not getting as much of an override, not asking for as much of an override, but really uh, going back and, and and looking at positions. Uh, because that's where you're going to have to make the cuts. That's because labor costs are, as in almost any job or any municipality, that's the biggest chunk that you can you can take from. And you, and, you know, there are certain things, just like in the federal government, where uh, Social Security, you can't touch that. There are certain things in our town budget that you can't touch, um, you know, um, benefits and things like that. So um, it's it's a real, um, it's a question that has to be answered by residents. And I think Meg Moriarty, who's the head of the school committee, said it perfectly and said, um, I feel it's really important to represent the values of the people in town. Now, you know, we, we built, we built um, you know, these three new buildings, uh, the, the, the middle and high school, uh, the rink, uh, and um, 
the new library. That's added a lot of cost, but it is something that the town wants. The residents said, we want these things. You know, we want, and, and that's how they're going to um, uh, uh, push this. And, um, and I think it's a, it's a good way. It's an adult way of, of saying, this is the reason we want it. It's our values and we're just gonna have to pay. And, but as Elizabeth Dion always says, who is the select board member, we're going to have to add, we're going to have to ask a lot of uh, we have to ask uh, the town to trust us because when we say we're going to have this override we also have to say we're going to make every effort to find new ways to getting revenue whether it's you know increasing our pilot program which is asking nonprofits and education um, uh, institutes to pay you know they don't have to pay but pay something to the town uh, all the way to uh, making major zoning changes. All right, so Franklin, there, there, there are a number of. This is just the launch of the process, mm -hmm. and um, you know, the warrant committee, the select board, the um, um, the school committee. That they, they, they have all. They, they will all be beginning their budget processes, and uh, there will be a number of public meetings to follow, and and we will have more details about those meetings um, later on. That's right. So more opportunities for input on the budget. So Franklin, you know, we've said it before, it's never too late to talk about the April elections and we already have a candidate who's announced. That's right. And this is even before the nomination paper's out. Uh, uh, Angus Abercrombie, the young man who... Uh, youngest youngest <laughs> person elected to town meeting. That's right. Um, uh, who's been, uh, has his name out there in... in outside of Belmont, even as one of these young uh, politicians, as he, he calls himself, a politician, uh, who is out there and they're the future of, uh, of, uh, of, of the new group of, of leaders. You know, uh, he was on, uh, I believe, uh, WBUR uh, with uh, two other young men, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, two young men. <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, they, uh, and, and, you know, they interviewed him as, as, you know, a very articulate person who, you know, is looking for a future in, in politics. And uh, Angus has, is now running for, uh, has, has said that he is, a, he's going to be running against Meg Moriarty and uh, Jamal uh, Saha. Uh, Sai. Sai. And uh, for uh, real, uh, well, we, we don't know if he's running against them. They're the two oh, current we, members. They, they, they've not announced right. that we know of. Um, it's very exciting because you know he he just graduated a couple of years ago or even you know from from the high school he's at Emerson University he's at Emerson um, where he's been um, you know doing um, um, uh, where he has been run and helping to run their their government you know he uh, actually um, was responsible for a one point one million dollar budget there so he says hey I, I you know I've got something I'm not just some guy who's doing this um, you know without any background. You know, he, he does have, he wants to represent like the voice of, of younger people, like uh, as you would expect, but also about the, the parents of, of students, you know, he, he like he said um, recently, you know, the students have no say, but he wants to give them that voice, you know, even though, though you know, there's only a few um, of, of a few students who are over 18 who could vote for him. He believes that parents would appreciate what he's been doing, and and, and so he he's he's using a, um, a mixture of useful enthusiasm, but also practical uh, um, uh, achievements. And he's someone who has lots of new ideas. So, so we're looking forward to hearing more from Angus Abercrombie. All right, next up, uh, we have merit increases for some of the town leadership. Franklin, what can you tell us? That's right, the select board uh, in, um, had merit increases and uh, well, had uh, annual reviews or reviews of um, uh, three of the major uh, employees in town and that is the uh, town administrator, the police chief and the fire chief. Um, uh, for uh, Let's start off with Patrice Garvin, uh, who's been here for about six years. Uh, um, and she uh, got glowing reviews from from this. She received, if, uh, out of a, a scale of uh, zero to five, she received on average a, a, a 4.79 um, uh, grade. Uh, and uh, let me just read um, uh, by uh, the, the board, the uh, select board uh, chair, Roy Epstein. I have the highest regard for Patrice. Not everybody in Belmont realizes the demands put upon town administration and how difficult it is to be successful in this role. 
So and that's 4.79 out of five, that's right? That's right. And, that, and that's not her increase. Her increase was 3%. <laughs> that's right. Her increase was 3%, which now uh, ups her salary to 212384 Okay, and so also we have the police chief and the fire chief. That's right, Jamie McIsaac, um, who has been on the police force for a long time and has been police chief um, uh, for about four or five years. Um, he uh, re also received glowing reviews uh, from the uh, select board, and he's now had a 3% increase, and uh, that his uh, salary now goes up to $210,000. Okay. And uh, finally, we have David DiStefano, uh, our fire chief, uh, he received a 2.5% merit increase, and he is now making $168,642. I'll just point out, these these merit increases, while warranted, they are not keeping up with inflation. That's right, and then that's something that Roy Epstein said with uh, Patrice Garvin. He said, you know, they, they don't look at her uh, her uh, her pay on its own. Look at it. Look at it as 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 part of um, uh, the how other people are being, how other town administrator or city manager are being paid in um, in in relatively comparable towns, and she's still making below average. All right. So, uh, hopefully, uh, that doesn't pose a risk for us. But uh, well. Uh, but the, the merit increases seem well-deserved. All right, so next up, um, let's talk about roads, Franklin. Yes, uh, we have uh, uh, the announcement uh, from uh, Glenn Clancy, who is, now the, who is now the head of the newly formed engineering division of the DPW. Uh, and, and he has announced the uh, 2023 uh, 20, uh, pavement management program, which is basically street reconstruction. And here are the winners. Chester Road, Hammond Road, Fletcher Road, Washington Street from Common to Godin. That's a good stretch. Uh, Bright Road from Washington to Concord, Mill Street, and Winter Street. With that, Winter Street includes raised speed tables. Okay. Um, now, uh, because of the lateness uh, that the select board has received these, um, uh, received this uh, program, uh, it is. Um, uh, Meaning it's too late in the season to begin this work. That's now. right. Only Bright Road will be uh, will, will will be repaid will be reconstructed and repaved before the end of the uh, construction season uh, in November. Uh, the the other roads will be in um, uh, uh, start in April or May. Um, the total cost is uh, uh, two point five eight seven million dollars. And that's uh, below the estimate from the uh, from Glenn Clancy uh, of 3.3 million. Um, one thing that people uh, that uh, raised some concern was that uh, uh, the um, uh, construction company that's going to be doing it is Newport Construction of National New Hampshire. Now, why would that be a concern? And they there have been complaints of their past work, especially with sidewalks, and the town acknowledged that, but uh, there was a mitigating. Uh, reasons for that something uh, you know the, uh, just getting a construction company to do any kind of work nowadays is 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 uh, they, they have so much work that they're 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 putting people here there and everywhere sometimes there's there could be miscommunication or one crew isn't doing as uh, the work is especially you know as, as as it was designed and part of that and i think is is a true story is that and glenn clancy said this at the at the meeting um uh, when the town uh, eliminated the resident uh, engineer, which is the person who looks at the roads, uh, when the when the override was failed back in 2021, that was a as was Dion said, it was a you know penny wise and, and pound foolish because now uh, those you know if we had a person out on the roads every day uh, looking at that construction, what a res resident engineer would do. We wouldn't have these problems. I do want to ask Franklin. So, with so much of of uh, this announced work being pushed to the next season, does that mean that that for the next season we'll effectively see a doubling up of work, or is there a, a um, are are there some constraints and um, we we won't be able to see as much work the following year? No, it is actually, uh, Glenn said that uh, uh, Mr. Clancy, who is the town engineer, said he's going to make an early start for next year. Okay. So we are going to see uh, a lot of road work. Okay. Uh, so that would be a good thing. All right. So, Franklin, we appear to be one step closer to a commuter rail 
underpass. Um, this is the Alexander Avenue underpass. What what can you tell us, and how how close a step are we? It's it's a it's I think it's I think it's a milestone myself. Uh, we are we are we uh, the select board approved uh, uh, the money for a final design for that uh, project, which is like you said, it's it's it would be an underpass. Uh, by the Alexander Bridge, uh, uh, by the Alexander Road, that would lead uh, people who are above the the, uh, the tracks an easy and safe way to get to basically the high school uh, and middle school. Um, it is something that uh, has been talked about since the uh, mid '70s, uh, especially when uh, a lot of what we would look at as uh, you know uh, Precinct Eight was being developed and 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 and. Really, a lot of younger people were, were living there. Um, it's uh, um, and, and what what's happened is that you know there was extra money that had to be given to this project mm -hmm. because um, the the state decided that they weren't going to require um, basically digging under the tracks with, and then putting a, a tunnel under there, uh, which would be more expensive and time consuming. They they basically came out in the middle of nowhere and said, you know what? What we can do uh, with this is you will just basically uh, dig out a you know a portion of the of the tracks and then put something a pre um, a constructed uh, you know tunnel. We'll make it that way. And they said that's great. And this is a big supposed to be a big cost saver. Isn't a it? big cost saver, but also a big time saver mm -hmm. you know, because what will happen and and um, uh, it was noted at the uh, meeting. Uh, well. It most likely will be done over a long weekend, and and people are pointing to uh, a Thanksgiving uh, day week, uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Where not you not this Thanksgiving. No, no, not this Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, but they said this would be perfect for Thanksgiving day weekend, where you where you would stop the tracks uh, after the last train leaves on Wednesday, and then you just work until um, you know Monday morning. So you have that time period, and they. And I guess these are these can be done over that short period of time. Well, let me ask you, Franklin, how much closer are we to act, are we to actually seeing the work being um, commenced? Well, it, you know, the well, it, the, the design have to has to be has to be produced, but since the the the, the money is coming from the state uh, Department of Transportation and the federal government, the money's there. So it's just getting the design done, getting it checked off, then let's go. So it could be, you know, let's let's hope in, you know, 14 months. Hopefully not another 20 years. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. So 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 finally, Franklin, um, we we've already had a ribbon cutting for the new uh, middle and high school building. But there is um, a dedication ceremony that apparently has been announced for um, October 21st. What can you tell us? Well, it's uh, as, as you said, there was a, a, a quick uh, ribbon cutting that was about 15 minutes. It was uh, outside and everybody was sweating because it was a really hot day. But this one is going to be more of a civic and uh, uh, celebration, uh, bringing everybody in. I would guess they have cake, <laughs> but they'll have speeches and, and tours of the, of the school. It'll be a real uh, uh, welcoming uh, of that structure to the uh, to the town. Do we have any plans yet for for um, the facility? For the festivities. Well, they said that they are the details are coming, but you know, I I could see the Boston Pops coming. I mean, that or, could be there. Or how about the dancing elephants? Uh, dancing elephants. I hear that that the Obama uh, sisters might come. Classic car show. That would be the perfect send off. Let me tell All you. right. Well, we don't know the details yet, but uh, I'm sure they will be good. All right, Franklin. Thank you so much. You can find more of Franklin Tucker's reporting at Belmontonian.com, Belmont's only online newspaper. Be sure to tune in next time, and we will see you then.